Welcome to Chapter 10, Group Audits, ACCA P7, Advanced Audit Insurance Paper. As always, we look at the big picture. Now, Group Audits, by the time you get to taking P7, it is rather assumed that you've taken and passed P2, and therefore have dealt with all aspects of consolidated accounts from an accounting point of view. And that's quite important because to audit group accounts, you do have to understand what group accounts look like, feel like, from an accounting point of view. They, um, that comes first, auditing comes second. The examiner likes to test your accounting knowledge in an auditing context, so you do need to understand an accounting concept first. In a scenario-based question, which is the way they tend to be, you will not be able to comment sensibly on the acceptability or otherwise of a client's proposed accounting treatment unless you have a sound accounting knowledge of the best accounting practice in that area. Okay, As part of your preparation for P7, make sure that you revise your accounting knowledge. Um, it is going to be vital when looking at the group subsidiary investment um, situation within uh, the audit paper of P7. The audit of group accounts is another of the topics not previously examined or F8, so this is the joy of P7, something new, which is good. It's it's therefore comes up very often um, in a scenario based question. Um, you like to get this sort of sort of thing. Key terminology. Okay, group auditor. Who is the group auditor? Well the group auditor is the auditor of the ultimate parent company. The the, the parents company being that at the top of the group structure. The group auditor is responsible for forming an opinion on the group financial statements as far as concerns the members of the parent company. Okay, so it's the group auditor who signs off the group financial statements. A component auditor are, are the auditors of subsidiaries, associates, joint ventures and branches, i.e. lower down the chain. Now a group auditor may also be a component auditor, but quite often in exam questions in particular, and in real life you may come across it, you can get a totally different firm of auditors who look after component auditors. Now that creates an interesting dynamics. When you're the group auditor, does that mean you can place reliance on another big four firm doing one a small subsidiary in a far off land? answer is you can replace Reliance but you need to test how good they've been, have they audited in the same standards that you would do because the key thing here is this bit up top here the group auditor is responsible for forming an opinion nobody else and you can't mention the fact that you haven't audited one of the subsidiaries in a far off country that's material to the group you can't mention that, you can't talk about the other um, auditor it's your opinion, your work, your, your, your uh, audit evidence. So, the main considerations of group auditor where component auditors are involved is you are acting as an auditor of a single company or group auditor. The basic principles are the same. You accept your appointment of the group. Your quality control is maintained for doing the group. You keep a high standard of ethics and your audit procedures you follow as if it was a single entity many times over and your reporting audit report is the same the financial statements balance sheet just they become a little bit more complicated because they are a group now as it says here you have to place reliance on someone else who's provided some work into your group solid consolidated accounts you haven't audited directly those subsidiaries, but a component also has done so. It might help you to remember some of the important considerations if you think in terms of what are my aims in this situation. This is a mnemonic, will hopefully help to remind you. AIMS stands for Accounting Policies, Information, Materiality and Scope. So what are these? Well, accounting policies, what you're looking for here 
is best practice generally requires uniformity and consistency in the application of accounting policies throughout the group. So it's no good having a subsidiary doing something completely different to another subsidiary to another subsidiary because that's just not going to work when you come to consolidate your uh, group situation. Information. As always, as a group audit, you must obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. So no different to a single entity, except it is now on a group basis. Possible problems may arise in this respect for a variety of reasons, perhaps particularly in relation to foreign components, such as accounting dates could be different, languages can obviously be different across many countries, legal requirements in different countries can be, can be different, the accounting standards in different countries can be different, but when you come to prepare the consolidated accounts, they must be prepared on the parent company's accounting standards. Typically in exam situation auditing standards are often they'll say something like the country ABC doesn't follow international auditing standards. So you're then left to sort of think how are you going to place reliance on a, an, an auditing firm in a country like that. And the reporting requirements can, can often be different. You as a group auditor have to think about those. Materiality. Now we're all familiar with, by now about what materiality is and feels like and looks like. But on a group situation, what does that mean? Well, what it is, it's the group context. In other words, you look at the group consolidated accounts and you consider what is material in those accounts and those accounts alone, not what was material in the subsidiary. Okay, so something might be material in a component subsidiary company but actually when you come to the group level is not necessarily material and this again in an exam situation is quite important to, to recognize the difference so as it says in the notes you only look at things as being material when taken collectively through with other component audit adjustments final one of AIMS is scope and reliability of the work of component auditors. Basically, you need to consider whether the component auditor has carried out their work to the same standards that you would have applied if you had done it yourself. That's what's key. You just cannot accept without question their work if, if you, before you place reliance on it. So the things you must consider are their professional qualification, do they have any? What, if they have, what is it? How long have they been working as a firm, as an individual? What experience they've got of your, your um, industry that the client's in? Are they independent, not only at the start of the audit, but at the end of the audit? Do they still have an independent relationship with the audit client? And what is their reputation like in the industry, in that country? And you can find these things out if you have an inquiring mind which as a group auditor you need to have. Okay, that's groups, quite a, a different subject from F8, hopefully an interesting subject, bound to come up, I believe, in, in every exam. So you do need to think about how to lay out a group answer for B7. Okay, see you in the next chapter.